It's springtime on the east coast of England. The cliffs are busy, the sun is shining, and it's dappling off the waves. The kittiwakes are calling, the gannets are returning from a long trip of fishing. And the puffins are inside their nests. Could there be a finer sight? I don't think they could. It must be time for... Into Wild. Now then? Hey up. So we are at Bempton Cliffs for this episode, which we were always going to be doing. However, this episode is has not gone to plan and we are definitely changing up what we had planned. So our original plans for this episode was that we were going to come from a seabird cruise around Bempton Cliffs and show you all the wildlife from a new perspective from basically on the sea. But the great British weather uh, basically put a stop to that and we couldn't go out because it was it was really, really bad weather. So what we've done is we've decided to do this into a two part episode and we're coming to you from the cliffs now. And then the second part, it will be a seabird cliffs, uh, a seabird cruise. We will get on it. But what's coming up in this episode? Yeah, it's a case of best laid plans, Rosie, isn't it? But we're trying to make the best of a situation that wasn't planned. So this episode we do know that we will be bringing you some footage from insider knowledge at Bempton Cliffs. We've got some fantastic footage of a bird rarely seen in the UK or the Northern Hemisphere at all, uh, the black browed albatross. And hopefully some other tidbits of bits and pieces that go on at Bempton and around the coastal area that, that we've been sort of visiting. So we're making the best of it um, and like Rosie says there's more to come in another episode hopefully. So this is def definitely part one. Yeah, and it is very sporadic. It so there's rather. some bits coming up. We're gonna have um, some yeah, intellect about some of the birds in general, about what they're all about. But also, we don't really know what we're filming after this. So it's gonna be a surprise to both you and yeah. us. So just bear with us, because yeah. I think it's still gonna be a great episode anyway. Come with us on an adventure. Let's see what we can see. Let's go. All right, let's do it. I'm here with Jamie Johnson who works at RSPB Bempton Cliffs and we are on Bartlett Nab on the northern end of the reserve having a good hour look out at some of the seabirds and we just thought we'd ask Jamie some questions about um, the reserve and some of the wildlife that you get here. So Jamie, thank you for joining us. No worries, it's alright. So we're at RSPB Bempton Cliffs. How many birds do we get here on the cliffs? So we're looking at anywhere between 300,000 and 500,000 at the peak time. Um, that number is made up of eight main species of seabird as well. Okay, and what, what sort of species are you seeing on the cliffs? So the ones that you tend to see a lot of are things like guillemots, razorbills and kittiwakes and then you also get things like puffins, um, gannets and herring gulls and the shag as well. Excellent stuff. One of the things I always really love to see here at Bunton Cliffs is yes, you've got the coast and you've got the cliffs, but there's an awful lot of land in the sort of hinterland before you get to the cliffs. What kind of species do we might we find on there? Yeah, so Bempton is obviously famous for its seabirds, but there's lots of other things to look for. Um, so, you know, behind, 
in front of us here, um, you've got corn buntings, you've got tree sparrows, uh, skylark meadow pipit, we've got barn owls nesting in the box over here, um, plus a, a wide array of other sort of small um, regular garden birds and other farmland birds as well. Fantastic. So you've got the tree sparrows here. So the tree sparrows are really, really struggling. We know that there's been a massive decline in tree sparrows. So to hear that there's a, a sort of a consistent colony here, that's fantastic to hear. Um, and in terms of other sorts of things that we're going to see on the reserve, is there anything else that you'd sort of recommend for people coming to visit Bempton? Um, so yeah, I mean, given that there's um, obviously the ocean here, um, you get things like um, dolphins, whales, porpoise, um, you know, we've even had basking shark before as well. Um, so there's really a good wide variety of uh, wildlife, even away from the seabirds. So we have talked about the usual suspects, mm. so we've got the dolphins, we've got the birds, um, and we've got the cliffs and everything. Um, I feel like there's something that we really should mention that we haven't yet. Um, who else is visiting the cliffs at the moment? Yeah, so aside from the uh, you know normal suspects, shall we say, um, we've got the fantastic black-browed albatross that has been visiting um, Bempton for the last couple of years now, um, but this year so far for sort of just over a month. Um, and that's been wowing visitors um, from as far as, you know, in the UK, Somerset, but actually even internationally, so people from Germany, from Greece, from Holland. Um, so it's a real spectacle for everybody to see. And there's a big reason for that, isn't there? Because the black brad albatross really shouldn't be here. I'm right in thinking it's a southern hemisphere bird, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so it tends to hang around in a band across the uh, southern hemisphere, but it's one of one in the UK um, and one of two in the northern hemisphere. Um, so we are very lucky indeed. So yeah, it's really, really special. Um, Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. No um, we'll let you get back to it um, and we'll see you again. Fantastic, thank you. Going off the back of what Jamie says about some of the species here, Let's explore in a bit more detail what they're about and what's so special about them. Puffins are unmistakable birds with their black back and white underparts, distinctive black head with large pale cheeks and their tall, flattened, brightly coloured bill. Its comical appearance is heightened by its red and black eye markings and bright orange legs. Used as a symbol for books and other items, this clown among seabirds is one of the world's favourite birds. With half the UK population at only a few sites, it is a red listed species. Puffins lay only a single egg in late April or early May. Both parents incubate it for around 36 to 45 days and they share the feeding duties until the chick is ready to fledge. The fledgling period is very variable, ranging from 34 to 60 days, depending on the area and year. Adult birds desert their young shortly before they are ready to leave the nest. The timing of the breeding in puffin colonies is highly synchronised and so the departure of all adults takes place within a few days. The young birds leave their nest burrow and make their way to the sea, normally under cover of darkness to avoid predators. In some colonies, for instance, in Iceland, nearby bright lights confuse the young birds which can then fly into the light and end up on city streets. Puffins usually reach breeding age at five to six years old and often live for 20 years. Adult gannets are large and bright white with black wingtips. They are distinctly shaped with a long neck and long pointed beak, long pointed tail and long pointed wings. At sea, they flap and then glide low over the water, often traveling in small groups. They feed by flying, high and circling before plunging into the sea. They breed in significant numbers at only a few localities and so is an amber list species. Gannets arrive at their colonies from January onwards and leave between August and September. Non-breeding birds can be seen at any time around the coasts and the main migration period offshore is during the autumn. Meet Albi. Albi is a black-browed albatross and the only one in the whole of the UK, and only one of two albatross in the whole of the Northern Hemisphere. Albi has a pure white head with a black line over and through the eye, the black brow. The heavy hooked bill is a yellow and pink colour. The huge wingspan is seven to eight feet with black upper wings and a broad black ledging edge to the under wings. The legs and large webbed feet are a fleshy gray colour. 
albatross rarely flap their wings, relying more on the aerodynamic glider light wings to carry them along with the prevailing winds. It's highly unlikely that this bird will ever make it back down to the southern oceans because of the effort it would take to fly against the prevailing winds and flap across the windless equatorial regions. Sadly, Albie is probably going to be alone and not pair up or mate. But he seems to be quite happy on the cliffs and what a spectacle it is to see and a possible once in a lifetime opportunity. We really recommend getting to the cliffs to see him. He is an absolutely stunning bird. Razorbills and guillemots are part of the orc family. The razorbill is a medium sized seabird. It is black above and white below. It has a thick black beak which is blunt and deep, unlike the thinner bill of the guillemot. It breeds around the coast of the UK, with the largest colonies in the northern Scotland. There are none breeding between the Humber and the Isle of Wight. The birds only come to shore to breed and winter in the northern Atlantic. The future of this species is linked to the health of the marine environment. Fishing nets, pollution and declining fish stocks all threaten the razorbills and guillemots. We were lucky enough to film a guillemot release while we were at Bempton. This individual had got themselves into a state. It was malnourished and after crash landing at Flamborough, it was picked up ready to be rehabilitated. After weeks of care, the bird was back to full health. Let's watch the moment that the guillemot was returned to the cliffs. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Go, yay! <laughs> Let's have a look at some of the images Rosie captured in the filming of this episode. filming this episode. Like we mentioned at the start, it wasn't what we had planned, but that just means we get to bring you part two of this episode and be able to see the cliffs, hopefully from the view from a boat. So make sure you keep tuned for that. We had so much fun rekindling friendships and work relationships with our colleagues at Bempton Cliffs. We really don't get to see them often, but every time we do, we have the most fun and do nothing but laugh. Thank you very much for having us, guys. We loved it. So stay tuned for part two of this episode. We will be bringing it to you from a boat. Thank you for your patience, guys. We cannot wait to see you. You into Wilders are fantastic. Yeah, so I mean, it's all year round as well. Um, got so... to poppy, it's got to poppy. You're receiving other. Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Where's the razor? Where's the gallivant? Um, we can cut, can we cut some? It's springtime on the east coast of England. The cliffs are busy. The sun's shining. The kitty wakes call. The puffins. <laughs> I don't think they could. It must be time for... Intet Wild. Oh no, spring watch. <laughs> 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 That's not our thing too.